There's a fine line between right and wrong. And somewhere in the shadows, they send us in to find them. What is up and welcome back. It's Scovos bringing you another Call of Duty Modern Warfare video today. And in today's video, we're going to be going over my absolute favorite class setup for the MP7 in Search and Destroy. So the very first thing we're going to touch base on is what field upgrade to use. And there's a lot of choices here, but I feel like the first and most obvious choice, and really the only one you should be using in Search and Destroy, is going to be Dead Silence. And the reason behind this is because it makes you extremely quiet, it has a recharge rate of fast, and... Not a lot of people seem to realize this, but gun, melee, and throwing knife kills also refresh their duration, allowing you to be in dead silence for longer periods of time. Now, when do you use dead silence? Dead silence is perfect to pop right before you get in a battle, right before sneaking behind enemy lines, before planting or defusing the bomb, especially if you're rush planting or ninja defusing. It is a perfect tool for just about any sticky situation. It's also great for escaping those sticky situations. If most of your teammates are down and not a lot of the enemy teammates have died, then you can pop this, escape, and then re-engage when you feel ready. And the next thing we're going to go over is the killstreak selections. So my personal favorite is going to be the 4 killstreak UAV, 5 killstreak cruise missile, and 8 killstreak VTOL jet. Now some other choices here is going to be personal radar, but the reason I'm pointing this one out specifically is because not a lot of people realize this either, but using personal radar does give away your position. So the personal radar will fly around your approximate location, and if you're behind enemy lines, especially on search and destroy, or if you're last alive and you use this, the entire team, if they're paying attention, or if they're smart enough, will realize where you are in relativity to the radar. So be careful if you're using this and it's also relatively easy to shoot down as you can just use a normal gun and a rocket launcher or something along those lines is not necessary. Now for UAV, a lot of people do use Ghost, but you would also be surprised how many people don't run Ghost in Search and Destroy. And for me, getting a 4 kill streak is not that difficult. I'm very good at Search and Destroy, and I don't talk highly of myself at many things, but Search and Destroy is something that I'm very confident in. That's why I run the 4, 5, and 8 kill streaks. So maybe if you're not comfortable with getting 8 kills, throwing that 3 kill streak personal radar is definitely a choice. Or throwing on a 7 kill streak. But personally, I don't really like any of these 7 kill streaks as I don't find them that useful. But moving on into the cruise missile. Cruise missile is definitely easily 100% my favorite kill streak out of any of these just because while using the cruise missile you can also call out every location of every enemy that you see. Take your time while deploying the cruise missile, call out those enemies to your teammates, and then you can easily pick one off. This is almost a guaranteed kill every single time you use it. So as it's coming down, you can target that sniper head glitching the back, the camper in the building if you can manage to get in a doorway or a window if they've just been there every single round, or it can come in clutch by killing somebody trying to defuse or plant the bomb if you're outnumbered. So if you have a cruise missile up and you're the last alive and the bomb is down, you can run away, pop that cruise missile, and kill any enemies trying to defuse, and that buys you some time, enough time, to hopefully hold off the timer and win that round. Other good choices, obviously, are going to be Precision Airstrike and Cluster Strike. You can drop these on the bomb you just planted, a bomb that they're trying to defuse, or a bomb that the enemy team is rushing. So this definitely holds off the bomb site for quite a good period of time, but does not give you the ability to call out every single enemy location. And if you're only targeting one person, it is very hit or miss whether you're actually going to get that kill or not. As for the VTOL jet, this is probably the strongest kill streak within reason on Search and Destroy. Obviously, any of the ones above this are very powerful, but the VTOL jet is extremely loud, and that's probably the biggest perk of it. So the VTOL flying around forces people indoors and then causes an atrocious amount of noise, and it's just ridiculous how loud this is. If you haven't played with this on Search and Destroy, give it a shot and pay attention to how you cannot hear anything at all. So if you're using this, you can pop your dead silence and pretty much do whatever you want because nobody's going to expect or know where you're coming from for that matter. And now moving into loadouts specifically. Now obviously my favorite Odin class setup will have the Odin Assault Rifle. 
but for the secondary across the board is going to be a combat knife. And the reason for using the combat knife is because you can pull it out off spawn and double sprint with it, getting the fastest movement speed possible. So I definitely use the combat knife anytime I go to rush plant or anytime I try to push up and grab a position I like to hold, waiting for the attackers or defenders to cross my line of sight. Another choice I use across the board is going to be the lethal Simtex grenade. And the reason I choose the Simtex grenade over all of the other uh, lethals is because claymores I feel like they're cheap, C4 takes too long to use in my opinion, frag grenades can bounce around sporadically, and molotovs and thermites are too hit or miss whether you're actually going to get a kill or not. The throwing knife is very precise and I miss way too often with those and proximity mine also feels like a claymore and it's kind of cheap to use in search and destroy. If you use those, nothing against you, but I prefer the Simtex in just about every way, shape and form. The Simtex, again, does not bounce around sporadically, so you can throw this in a room, know that it's going to stay in the room. If you stick an enemy, it's a guaranteed kill for the most part. And then it's also good against riot shielders, and there's a lot of riot shielders running around in search and destroy, so you can definitely use this to your advantage. It's also great for spawn nading certain areas or throwing it at vehicles and cars in order to get the kills that you want. So let's go ahead and move into the MP7 attachment specifically, and the first one on the list is going to be the muzzle. So our selection for the muzzle here is a very easy first choice with the monolithic suppressor, and the reason this is such an easy first choice is because it increases your damage range. Damage range allows your bullets to deal their fullest amount of damage over further distances. The other pro here is the pro that comes with any suppressor, which is the sound suppression. But it's not that big of a deal since red dots don't show up on your minimap at this current state of the game. So the cons for this are going to be aim walking steadiness, which is a very particular con, which means that your weapon is going to sway a little bit more while aiming and walking. So it's not that noticeable and not that big of a deal. The other con here is aim down sight speed and we will make up for this with other attachments. And as for our barrel selection, we're going to go with the FSS Recon. And again, this increases your damage range. So in combination with the Monolith Expressor, you can essentially snipe people with the MP7. And this can compete with M4s, AK-47s, and various other assault rifles. So this also increases bullet velocity and recoil control, with the cons being aimed on sight speed, and we will make up for that. The other con being movement speed, but the movement speed con here is not that noticeable and not that great. So now we're going to go over to stock and we're choosing the FSS close quarter stock which increases aim down sight speed, cancelling out the cons from these other attachments. The con on this attachment is going to be aiming stability which is just the weapon sway while aiming down your sights and is not that big of a deal and not that noticeable. For our rear grip, I feel like this is probably the most used attachment in Modern Warfare and that's going to be the stipled grip tape. And the reason why a lot of people use this is because of the pros being so powerful. It increases your aim down sight speed, canceling out other attachments for this weapon build, and increases sprint to fire speed, allowing you to shoot faster after sprinting, which is a pretty mandatory grip for any SMG. The con on this again is going to be aiming stability, which is just the sway of the weapon while aiming down your sights. So for the last attachment, we're going to have a few different choices, and this is mostly going to be personal preference. If you would prefer a sight over the iron sights, then selecting an optic like a reflex sight is going to be your number one choice. Other choices will be sleight of hand to allow you to reload faster, or a larger mag size allowing you to shoot more without reloading. This weapon already has a pretty good mag size, so I don't feel like a bigger clip is very necessary here. The underbarrels have a lot of major cons, and that's why I did not choose one of these for my own setup. Cons to movement speed, aim down sight speed, and those of that nature are too strong here to make up for and just not worth it in my opinion. So my choice was this 1 megawatt laser because it increases hipfire accuracy which is great for an SMG like this especially one with high fire rate. And the cons on this are non-existent, there is no con for this weapon attachment. So that made it an easy choice for myself. And that will wrap up the video for today. I want to thank you for stopping by. Please click that subscribe button. It really does help me out quite a bit. And it'll help me help you by putting out more quality content. And if you did like the video, you can also click that thumbs up button. If you did not like the video, you're more than welcome to click the thumbs down as well. And as always, let me know what you think below in the comment section. I want to hear your thoughts and opinions on all of this. And if you want to know right when my videos go live, you're more than welcome to click the bell icon to get notified when they do right away. 
And just a heads up for all of my followers, subscribers, and my loyal viewers across all of my social media channels, I will be rolling out my YouTube membership very, very soon. So keep an eye out for that join button on my YouTube channel. This is going to include exclusive giveaways, extra entries for those giveaways, exclusive playtime for some of the tiers with me on any game that you want, and other various rewards. I'm also open to suggestions and ideas from all of you still sticking around this video long enough to hear me talk about this. As always, I hope you have a good evening, morning, night, afternoon, or whatever it is, wherever you are, but thank you for stopping by, and I hope to see you in my next videos.